Everything I've ever achieved in my whole life and career has been down to one thing. Every milestone, every award, every success has been down to the fact that from when I was a small child, whenever our family went on holiday, my mom made me pack my own suitcase. Now, this might not sound like a life-changing event, just packing for a trip. But actually, from a young age, it taught me every skill that I still use today. It taught me how to plan for the future, even if that future was just a weekend at grandma's. It taught me how to work within a constraint. The suitcase was only this big, and there was definitely no spare room in my sister's. It taught me critical thinking. Where was I going? What was I doing? What was my priority? And which sacrifices did I need to make? It taught me independence and decision-making, because no one else was going to decide for me. It taught me how to learn from my own mistakes, the mistakes made when packing for previous trips. What I realize now is that everything I was learning when I was packing my own suitcase made me, by my own definition, a useful person. And I believe that we need to create millions more useful people. And today, I'm going to share with you how we can do that. So why do we need more useful people? Well, the jobs market is changing faster than ever before. A recent study carried out by Oxford University predicts that 35% of jobs are at risk of automation within the next 20 years. That's over a third of jobs within 20 years. I remember being 16 and going to see the careers advisor at my school. If I'd have said then that when I leave school, I want to be a social media manager, I'd have had some strange looks. That job didn't exist. Social media didn't exist. Yet just six years later, at 22, I set up my own agency. By the age of 28, I'd hired 30 people and I'd grown my agency. Yet it was the suitcase, rather than school, that gave me the skills to do that. For me, and for every one of the 30 people I've hired, those careers advisors probably told them they should be lawyers, accountants, or as my friend Rob was told, a fisherman. No one said social media manager. Jobs are constantly changing, and the skills and the demands required of them are changing too. So we need to ask ourselves, are we best preparing people for jobs that don't yet exist? Is it essential today to know the properties of halogens? Is it essential today to know the ins and outs of trigonometry? Is it essential today to know where tectonic plates meet? And are we just going to Google these things anyway? None of the people I've ever hired studied social media marketing at school. In fact, the only academic skill my company looks for is writing ability. Apart from that, when we're hiring useful people, we look for skills that I call enterprising. The ability to think independently, to be positive, resilient, confident, to communicate effectively, and to build a rapport with clients and colleagues. Enterprising people solve more problems than they create. They make better decisions faster. They cause fewer mistakes, less admin. They won't just follow a system because it's there. They'll question it. They'll progress the world like no one else can. So why aren't we creating more useful people with the enterprising skills that I've talked about? Recently, I was talking to my best friend, Sean, and I think our conversation explains this. Sean is an English teacher at a secondary school here in Birmingham. She's desperate to teach her kids to think creatively about text and she promotes role play and other innovative activities designed to develop a range of skills, including communication. But the parents of her pupils don't want that. Every week, she has lines of them lining up outside her door, asking her why she's not teaching her kids an essay a week. That's what they need to do to get an A in English, they say. Just get them to do that. They question her teaching. Schools need their kids to pass exams. Parents want their kids to do well at school. The best teachers understand that a change is needed, but the curriculum can't keep up. If you think about it, we're not even learning subjects. We're learning how to pass exams. We're learning how to play the system. The education system is breeding brilliant box tickers, but robots can tick boxes. Robots can follow 
procedures without making mistakes. Let's teach people the things you can't Google. As it stands, what we've created is a conveyor belt of education. You go to school, you pass exams with ever-increasing importance so you can go to sixth form. Then, more exams to get to the best university possible. Then as graduates, we go on the best graduate scheme possible with a view to landing a career job. We've really bought into this holy grail ideology of the career. So much so that almost without question, we're willing to put ourselves into 30 grand's worth of debt just on the promise of everything this career brings. Whatever you think of the system, the career aspect of it is changing. As I said earlier, 35% of jobs are at risk of automation, and the rest of them are changing on an almost daily basis. We don't know what the careers of the future look like. What we do know is that we need to develop the useful people that can excel in any role. The positive, resourceful, and creative behavior that fits my definition of a useful person is developed by teaching enterprise. But there's a problem in trying to teach enterprise. Number one, we don't really know what it means. Number two, it's subjective. And number three, there's no mark scheme. So rather than trying to teach enterprise, we try to find examples of enterprising people. We point to famous entrepreneurs and business people, people that we read about in the media and we see on the television. People like the dragons on Dragon's Den. Great examples of useful, enterprising people. And yet, they're in a dark room, surrounded by wads of cash, scowling at anyone who dares to approach them. People like Lord Sugar from The Apprentice. Great example of an enterprising person. And yet, he's in a soulless glass boardroom at the top of an imposing skyscraper, pointing aggressively at people who've tried their best. You're fired, you're fired, you're not good enough. People like Lord Business, the evil antagonist from the Lego movie, which I went to see for research purposes. <laughs> in the film, Lord Business wears a dark pinstripe suit, he towers over everyone, and he glues all the Lego together so that no one can play with it. Then you've got Harry Wormwood from Matilda. Mr. Burns from The Simpsons, and Scrooge from A Christmas Carol. Evil, greedy, mean business people. This is enterprise, we're told. These people are enterprising. But will any of these characters inspire enterprising behavior and help us create the useful people that we need? There's a mismatch between how enterprising behavior is portrayed and what it really is. It's no one's priority to address this. Schools need their kids to pass exams. Parents want their kids to do well at school. Developing useful people is not the focus of education, yet it's the only thing that matters. So what if we developed resourcefulness and adaptability rather than taught linear skills and essays? What if we had positive, enterprising role models to inspire a change in behavior? Back in 2012, I was invited to, to a roundtable discussion with 11 other young entrepreneurs who'd all started their business with less than a thousand pounds. The chair of the meeting went around the whole room. He asked everyone about their business, the teams they hired, and their turnover. At this point, I felt so out of my depth. There was a guy there who'd been a millionaire at 14. There were people building huge teams of people, building household names, brands. I had like the smallest business in the room at the time. So when he'd been around the table, the chair of the meeting said, just out of interest, out of the 12 of you, who here has a parent who's also started their own business? I put my hand up. My mum's been self-employed for as long as I can remember, thinking there'd be maybe a few of us. 11 out of the 12 people in the room also raised their hand. So this was quite a wow moment, looking around the room, going, ah. And this isn't about money. We were all there because we'd all started our business on less than a thousand pounds. This was about useful people creating more useful people. We were the lucky ones to have our parents as role models. And what I realize now is that when my mom was getting me to pack my own suitcase, 
she was passing on her useful person skills. So it led me to believe that first you need to find a role model to become enterprising, and then you need to be a role model to inspire others. But what about kids who, grow up, who don't grow up with enterprising role models? Who are theirs? My own take on helping everyone to find an enterprising role model was to write them into storybooks. Storybooks for children ages six to nine, which help to get them familiar with characters who are enterprising themselves. Earlier this year, my co-founder and I secured sponsorship to gift the Clever Tykes storybooks into every primary school in the UK, giving four million, four million children an enterprising role model, no matter what their background. We also have a thousand forward-thinking teachers using our resources to teach enterprising skills to their pupils. Another example is startup loans, which give small, low-interest loans and mentors to grown-ups looking to start their own business. But do you know what's genius about this company? It's not focused on teaching people to start a business. It's focused on developing enterprising people. It's essentially letting people play businesses and learn from mentors, real-life role models. Startup Loans is an excellent example of enterprise education. In reality, who cares if these people go on to run their own business, to be freelance, to be employed in the public, private, or charity sector? It doesn't matter. What matters is creating the useful people that can do anything that they want to do. Both of these examples, startup loans and clever types, took groups of people completely separate to the education system to put in place and implement this kind of enterprise education. So, you can borrow 30 grand, you can go to uni, and you can spend three years getting a degree. Or you can borrow three grand to give entrepreneurship a crack, develop commercial awareness, and become a useful person. One of these is completely mainstream, completely normal. The other seen as a crazy risk. When we begin to realize that the current and future jobs climate needs useful people, and that that is more important than teaching people how to follow procedures and pass exams, we'll adapt the world around us like never before. It will only become mainstream when people care about it enough, when they see how equipping people with enterprising skills will best help them adapt to an unknown jobs market. So there's a formula that I've come up with that I think explains everything I've talked about. Enterprise education plus role models equals useful people. Everything we need to develop useful people already exists. There's something out there for people of all ages. There's enterprise nation, enterprising child, enabling enterprise, young enterprise, clever types, female entrepreneur association, stepping into business, we are lucky, startup loans, startup Britain, hot 500. The problem is, Whilst you may have heard of some of those, they are not yet mainstream. It's down to the useful people like us to be enterprising, to inspire others to be enterprising too. We have to stress the importance of enterprising skills. We have to be the role models for those at the start of their journey. We have to make enterprise education mainstream and woven into every subject. We have to make sure that those forward-thinking teachers stick to their guns and push the agenda for developing the resourceful kids who will be the useful people of the next generation. Parents, at the very least, make your son or daughter pack their own suitcase. <laughs>